Thank you, Chris. And first of all, I want to say thank you, all of you, for being here and taking a stand to end this war in Iraq. Uh, the, the pressure that you create is very important, for not, not just for people in Maine, but the, the movement. The movement has to keep going because we are stuck in a war that we cannot uh, manage in the way we've managed it. We have to bring our troops home, and you're doing, you're doing what you need to do to drive that message. Greg, thank you for being here. You know, you know as, more than anyone, because you're getting those messages from Jeremy, uh, how hard this is on families, your own and others. And uh, I just want everyone here to keep you and Jeremy, your family, in their thoughts and prayers. Uh, because uh, we can't thank you enough for what you're doing, what he's trying to do. We hope and pray for his safe return soon. I was just in Iraq in the first week of August. I went to, spent a one full day there, one very long day. I spent two days in Afghanistan, one day overall in Pakistan. And I, I have to say that it's people like Jeremy Cody, who I, I met probably a dozen or more uh, soldiers from Maine. And they are doing all sorts of different functions, some more dangerous than others, but uh, they are doing the best they can in an almost impossible situation. Uh, they've been di given a variety of tasks, but they, they are uh, getting up every day in incredibly dangerous circumstances and trying to do what they were sent there to do. And I will say, you know, for, for some of them, I was, I was flown in from Baghdad Airport over to a place outside the Green Zone in a Black Hawk helicopter, the flag vest, the helmets, all of us were wearing those. When we were traveling around in Baghdad, it was the same routine although this time armored uh, SUVs with flak jacks and helmets. And the bottom line is you can't move over there without understanding how dangerous that place is for any American, for most of us in the West, and of course, especially for the Iraqis who don't fly in Iraq in the Black Hawk helicopters, who don't have flak vests, but have to get up every day and try to carry on with their lives in Baghdad and around the country with some sense of normalcy. What I thought I would do today, after asking you to remember them and to remember our soldiers who are over there and to just frankly stay committed to ending this war, is talk a little bit about where I think we need to go in the next month or two to change our policy. And it comes down, frankly, to this. We have a policy today that is an open-ended commitment to keep our forces in Iraq for the indefinite future. I had lunch with General Petraeus and Ambassador Ryan Crocker, and the General said he expected that we would be in Iraq in some form for nine or ten years. And I say that is completely unacceptable. We met with the Deputy Prime Minister of Iraq, and he, he said to us, remember, Iraq is a country in transition. He said, our political problems will not be resolved by September or even by next September. And he didn't say when. Because here, here's the bottom line of what I saw over there. The bottom line was, we have our soldiers. They are rocketing, they are being rocketed at night from the Shia. They are uh, running the risks of being blown up by the Sunni insurgents when they go out on patrol in Baghdad, or being fired at by Shiite militias. They, we are in the middle, the absolute middle, of a religious civil war that goes back 1,300 years. And we can't referee that fight. And that's why we need to bring our troops home. And here's what I think is going to happen in the next uh, the next month or two. General Petraeus is going to come up with a report. And he was real clear. I sat next to him at lunch. He was real clear. Bush sometimes talks as if Petraeus, General Petraeus is the commander in chief. We're all waiting for General Petraeus. We have to see what General Petraeus says we should do next. But the general said to me, look, the United States can change its policy in Iraq. But my job, he said, my job is to deal with the conditions on the ground as I find them. In other words, 
his report will be a military report. He will be saying what we need to do in order to deal with Al-Qaeda in Iraq, what to do with the Shiite militias, how to deal with the Sunni insurgency. And he's going to say, look, we've made, we have some tactical momentum, was the phrase he kept using, some tactical momentum against Al-Qaeda in Iraq, which means that because the Sunni sheikhs have turned against Al-Qaeda in Iraq, in Iraq, a little in, in areas to the west in Anbar province and in a few areas to the north, it means that we've been able to get in a little stronger position against Al-Qaeda in Iraq. Now remember, they're responsible for about 10% of the violence. Well, it's good to be, have some progress against a group that's responsible for 10% of the violence, but it doesn't drop the violence level to such an extent that any of us can say, wow, great, we're making progress, let's stay the course. That would be a crazy policy. But if you don't have a deadline for bringing the troops home, then you have an open-ended commitment. And Senator Collins has introduced legislation, and she said her plan is to change the mission. She says we need to keep our troops there in order to protect Americans. Well, we're doing that now. She says we need to keep our troops there in order to train Iraqi soldiers. We're doing that now. And she says we need to keep our uh, troops there to fight Al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups. Well, as far as I can tell, all those people who are shooting at us, all those people who are attacking and killing uh, Iraqi civilians are terrorist groups. You just have a whole bunch of them. You have competing Shiite militias down in Basra. They're fighting for control of the city. They're killing each other. You have Sunni insurgents and the, the Mahdi Yami in, in, uh, in Baghdad, they're all firing at us, they're killing each other, you have criminal gangs. I mean, you have an absolute catastrophe in Iraq today. And if you don't set a deadline for our withdrawal, then there is no change in policy. 